wonder what happens when you die? I wish I'd go to heaven. But then again, I don't think I'm good enough to go to heaven. I've done too much nonsense. But I'm not bad enough to go to hell. So, deal. How about I get a chair right next to St. Peter in heaven? I don't get inside, just sit at the gate with the bouncers, right? Because I think that's gonna be a lot of entertainment for me. I will enjoy watching white people get rejected at the gate. That's gonna be amazing. Because white ladies don't deal with rejection well. So that's gonna be entertainment for me for eternity. Can you imagine it? South African white ladies, you know the lady I'm speaking about? The lady from Woolworths, her. She gets there and she's like, let me in. Check me, I'm on the list. I'm like, okay, okay. What's your name? Karen. Oh, of course, of course it's Karen. Okay, no, sorry, you're not on the list. Excuse me? Who wrote that list? Can I speak to your manager? You mean Jesus? No, 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 your manager. Sorry, St. Piwe. It's St. Peter. St. Piwe, can I get on the list? <laughs> I'll sit there and laugh the whole time. So first up, there's a comedian that I thought was long dead. I still think he is, but they brought him back because they kind of fought Mark Lottery. Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Skundrad. Yeah. I hate my life so much. Thank you. I, for a second there, honestly, I felt like the whole country applauded. That was lovely. Thanks very much to all of you. Um, uh, I, you know, there's, there's so many things I want to chat to you about tonight, but let's let's start off with, with, with uh, Observatory, where I live, and the crime that I experienced there. Does anybody know Ops? Just... Just the camera guy then, I love it. All right, OBS, for those of you who don't know OBS, OBS is like the place for the culturally challenged in South Africa. If you don't fit in anywhere else in the world or in South Africa, you go live in OBS. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the white boys grow dreadlocks over there. And, and the brothers have accents like, I say, oh boy, a game of polo wouldn't kill right about now. It's a bit flippy sidey, you know. Have you ever checked the Oak user ATM in observatory? Yeah. You stick your card in. The machine tunes you. Please enter your PIN number, followed by a hash. Doot, 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 doot. <laughs> and then the machine tunes you. Oh, would you like to check your balance, bro? So I'm all right, thanks. So I live in OBS, and uh, as you can well imagine, um, we've got crime in OBS, just like we have everywhere else in the world. And um, I just happened to drive, at the time, I drove a white city golf. Do you, know that, do you know what that means? That means that car gets stolen three times a week. In fact, I've heard a rumor that certain insurance companies will not insure a white city golf, or a white polo for that matter, because it's most likely to get involved in some kind of crime or get hijacked or something. So anyway, I had a white city golf, and it was a weird thing because my car disappeared about six times, in fact. My car got stolen six times, but I didn't mind too much because every time it came back, it had extra parts, and that was before I liked that. New bag wheels, new pair of seats, fin at the back. By time number five, it never came back, so I reckon uh, sacrifices had to be made. But the story is about that particular car, my white city golf. City golfs are so easy to get into. I don't know if you ever owned one. But I got into one one day, and I was driving away when I realized that there was a thingy hanging from the mirror that wasn't mine. Hmm? Hmm, uh-uh. Yeah, it wasn't my car, bro. <laughs> but my key worked on it. Can you explain that at a roadblock? Meneer, this was not your voertuig, nie man. Well, bro, I got in it, it's white, it was a city golf. I put the key in and it worked, my bro. So, uh, that should get you out of some kind of car, don't you think? I'm just saying. Now, I've been broken into before, like I said, I've had stuff stolen before, but I've never quite had it done to me like this before. All right. So, picture the scene, it's uh, about six o'clock on a Tuesday morning in observatory, in the culturally challenged part of the world. And, um, <clears throat> I walk past my car and I check that that windscreen is lang clean, my bro. It's that mm. time I realized, my bro, that my front windscreen mm. was redistributed to the new South Africa. Now, like I said, I've been broken into before, you know, that small little triangle window in the corner of the city golf over there? They should call that the hymen. Because you never forget the first time they break that thing. So. 
Anyway, I'm just saying. So they broke that window many, many times. But this is the first time they stole the windscreen out of my car, bro. So I was a little shocked by that. But thank God for small mercies. There my windscreen was. Standing up against the side of the wall without a scratch on it. That was good luck, wasn't it? So I hoid my windscreen on the back seat. And I proceeded to figure out how to replace this windscreen without having the stuff that's left in my car stolen while I'm inside trying to replace the windscreen. So this took a little bit of figuring out. Eventually, I figured out that I've got a housemate, Wayne. Now, Wayne, I gotta give Wayne a little bit of context, if you know what I mean. Wayne is your typical obs boy, right? It's at six o'clock in the morning, Wayne's like, How's it, bro? I turn it away and I'm over here. He's like... Put it this way, Wayne's. Wayne's, Wayne's special. In fact, Wayne never knows what the time is. You can ask Wayne anytime, bro. Ah, right, Wayne, what's the time, bro? He's like, um, I think it's like summer, bro. It's Wayne's, Wayne's, Wayne's kind of time-ish. Not very specific, you know, it's not like, it doesn't have a chronograph there checking what time summer started. So I tune Wayne, Wayne, buy with me, bro. Plum next to me over here, and bro, do me a favor, bring sunglasses. Because there's no windscreen. So Wayne grabs his bank bag and his sunglasses and gets in the car next to me. So the two of us are driving through Observatory. Wayne is in his happy place. You know, as you're going down the highway, as you're coming into the city of Cape Town, Wayne's sitting in the passenger seat going, Bruh, this is like being at the back of a bucky. <laughs> but with no bucky. That described exactly what Wayne was like. And you know, as, you, as you're coming into the city in Cape Town over there, if you've ever been to the city, there's a big sign up there that says, Cape Town, for sure. So we took that off ramp, you know, the one that runs onto the foreshore, and we stopped at a set of robots over there. Now guess who I check in the corner of my eye. You guessed it, the window washy guy. You know the oak I'm talking about. With a handy Andy bottle. With a hole on top. And a squeegee, my bro. And I checked him come from way inside of the car, bro. In slow motion, bro. And by the time Wayne spots it, I couldn't warn him in time, bro. It was too light. By the time Wayne scans this oak, he's got a mouth full of soapy water, bro. Window washy guy scripted so big to check that there's no windscreen, he just kind of followed through with the squeegee. Hoid us five ran and fine. Hey, thank you! Thank you, thank you! Thank you, Wembley Stadium! Thank you. I'm here till Thursday. I do bar mitzvahs, pagan festivals, all kinds of other stuff. Book me now. Let's laugh. You know, pop was happy. Hey, God's Kunrat. Can you believe we've been doing that for more than 20 years? <sighs> Neither can I. <sighs> Let's see what's on TV. Hey, <laughs> okay. Um, hi guys. So, as you guys are aware, we are getting closer at a time where the weather is hot. That means equal to summertime. You check? So what I want to say is, can we please uh, do the right things in terms of hygiene? That means taking care of the body you are in. Can we make sure that we are wearing roll-on because the heat is hot? You check? So when you sweat, this guy gets a bit wet, check. The hairs in there, just make sure you are making uh, a way for 
uh, uh, the roll on to make it impactful that it stays at a time where you are not going to secret odors. I'm not talking about those with medical conditions. You guys are removed from this conversation. I'm talking about those who refuse to use that thing they call deodorant and plus roll on. Please make sure that that guy is sufficiently covered. You will find at the time when it is really hot, we sweat from the pores. Also those that are drinking excessively, make sure you are dashing with water in between your shorts. Because when it's hot, the body is taking out what? The smell of tequila. Then I can see and smell that even through a mask, I can smell that, oh, it was a party last night. Huh? You were going up last night, party going up. On a Tuesday, got the girl, then you wanna do the roost day. That Ampit, gotta do the thing, so check. Also, can we make sure our feet are moisturized? Because I know the sandals are going to be a thing. You want your feet to breathe. No more techies because really there's no need for that at, 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 at large. You don't have to have your feet warm unless you have a condition. But can we make sure we are scrapping our feet because mukenge? If we don't know what mukenge is, it's a collection of skins at the end of your heel that make like, look, you know when you, when you gather them, it looks like pap. You know when it's not cooked, that raw pap. You don't want that stuff on your feet, man. You don't want to wake up in the morning when you see the sheets, then it's like, oh, what a gathering of pop at the end. You don't want to make your partner look at you like, whoa, perhaps we should take you to a pedicure because you need a cure for those heels. Cutting the sheets because they are so rough than heels. Guys, let's look after ourselves. This is basically me saying, guys, check yourself before you wreck yourself. It's just a young PSA. Let's look after ourselves. It's summertime. We want to be fine. Just look after yourself. Thanks. You know, earlier I spoke about heaven and hell, and I realized heaven is bad marketing. Fact. People say it's the land of milk and honey. I don't like milk or honey. You know who's got a better pitch? The jihadists. Because jihadists are like, if you get to heaven, you get 72 virgins. It sounds great on paper, but think about it. I've been a teenager before. I've had to deal with virgins. Virgins are not the best. You know, you'll be kissing on your mother's couch for like an hour, and she'll be like, I'm not ready. You want to do that 72 times? That's crazy. You know, if I get to heaven and I get 72 virgins, I'm cutting a deal. I'll be like, you know, take your virgins. How about you give me one slay queen and a girl from Pinoni? Deal? Deal. Anyway, the next guy is not as funny as I am, but He's got a pedophile mustache, and that works. Ladies and gentlemen, Skog Pazeta No. Lacamine sir, hello, it's Skog Pazeta No. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Yo, mean sir, post corona, no? You have to now go back outside into the world. Yes, it's lacquer, but there's pros and cons, mean sir. Pros, you can see people again, you can go to a bar, you can drink, cons, you have to fucking speak English again, don't really have a choice, you know, that's that's the world we live in, man, so if you're a second language speaker, sorry for you, English is the universal language, that's what we have to speak, you know, and if I could just, you know, ask our fellow South Africans, the first language English speakers, just take it easy, you know, lockdown was long. Our English is not the best right now. We were all fucking indoors speaking our mother tongues. Also, now people going back to work, you know. I am so glad, man, sir. I am so glad I can do this for a living. I don't have an office job. Because, you know, in every office, there's a fucking Jason. And you know that, Jason. He will always gather the whole office on a Monday and always find a second language speaker to pick on. It's normally an Afrikaans guy. And he'll go, Skulk, just repeat what you said for the office. Please just repeat what you said for the office. And then you're like, Jason, please don't do this. Not today. Just say what you said. Come on, it's a Monday. We need a laugh. And then you're like, Jason, it was a long weekend. My English is warming up for the week. Please. 
Don't be a doer. And then eventually Jason, he will just say what you said. Eventually Jason will go, okay, guys, I'll just say what he said. Guys, Skull just said he is going to throw me with the stapler. So let me get this right, Skulk. You're not going to throw the stapler at me. You're going to physically pick up me in the sand and the stapler in the sand and you're going to literally throw me with the stapler and then everyone tears their fucking wall in half laughing. It's the funniest thing ever and you're just standing there like a poo Maybe I will. Fucking test me, Jason. Maybe I will. That is maybe exactly what I meant to say. You know, I like in my comedy to uh, often speak about, you know, English people give them a bit of cock, you know, but it's all in good jest. What I didn't know, nah, is that the older generation, because obviously the Afrikaans and English have beef from way back, you know, it comes from like the Anglo Boer War days. And obviously, yeah, you know, we're not enemies anymore. But what I didn't know is that your older generation, they still hold on to that. It's quite hectic. They still hold on to that hatred for each other. I realized it the other day, my fiance and I. Now, she's Engels. Nah. Look, she's Engels from Benoni. Okay, so it's, a, it's, it's more of an Afrikaans Engels, but she's English nonetheless. Okay, Afrikaans not like perfect. She can't understand, she can't speak. So we go to a wedding in Bella Bella, nah, Varambat. We go to the guest house, we get ready. Now we're on our way to the wedding. It's like a few kilometers out of the town. And we literally two, three kilometers from the venue, the car breaks down. Not my car, I've got money. She drives a piece of shit, Suzuki Swift, nah. We break down, there's steam coming out from the engine and cock. Luckily, oh my word, I can't believe our luck. It's outside this like house and it says there on a sign, Oh, potgieter, boorgaat pompdienste, like ball pomp services. Ne? And there's a number. I found the number on the sign because I see there's a house, the man answers. Hello. I say, listen, uh, there's a house here. Do you live here on this property? He says, yes. I said, oh my word, I can't believe my luck. Listen, you won't believe me. Our car literally just broke down outside of your property. Please, can you just come? We, I think we just need some water for the engine. A few minutes later, he arrives, but very stereotype, you know, like he's wearing his car keys, arm out the window, but he's very friendly, you know, like your stereotype. Afrikaans with me who lives in Barambat, nah? And I go over, introduce myself politely in Afrikaans, I shake his hand, it's like, Hello, oom, skalk beside note. Dankie dat oom ons help vandag. Now, my fiancé approaches, but remember, men, so we're going to a wedding, nah? So she's wearing a beautiful dress. Her hair is done. Her makeup, she's looking incredible okay she always looks incredible but now incredible incredible and she's very shy she's a very soft-spoken shy person so she comes walking over well not like this okay she's not the fucking hunchback of notre dame but you know what i mean she's she's making herself small out of respect for this whim he's there in his bucky she walks over and she says just like in a beautiful soft voice she goes hello sir i just want to say Thank you so much for helping us today. This whim goes, You don't talk English to me! You don't talk fucking English to me! But he says it in Afrikaans. He shouts it in Afrikaans, which is even scarier. He goes, Moenie met my Engels praat nie! Jy praat nie met my fucking Engels nie! Now I'm standing there now. I am shocked. I mean, he is shouting at my fiancé into a beautiful face no? and i'm standing there and i'm thinking oh my word did this whim just become my hero because we've all wanted to do that you know me so as a second language speaker we've all wanted to do that but no one actually has the balls to do that because you know at the end of the long day now you just want to speak your mother tongue that's all you want to do you just want to speak your mother tongue because your brain is tired. I mean, as I'm standing here, it doesn't really th look like I'm concentrating too hard. Like I'm thinking about every word. But in my head, it's fucking... This going on right now. 
So at the end of a long day, you just want to speak your mother tongue. You just want to go to Woolies. And when that lady's like, hi, sir, check or say, you just want to go, money with my eagles, prate. Yeah, prate with my fucking eagles, day. Especially now, no? When you're in an Afrikaans English relationship and it gets to the bedroom, no? <laughs> now, as a man, when you take off your shirt, you already feel self-conscious, no? You feel self-conscious and screw you if you're one of those guys. Remember those guys in school that used to run around the field once and then they're like, ooh, the shirt is holding me back. And then you're like, it's July, you on. It's not that fucking hot. Put on your shirt. But now you already feel self-conscious. You want to look sexy. And then you have to speak in your second language. When you speak in your second language, you also feel self-conscious. So now you're doing a self-conscious thing while doing a self-conscious thing. And that's not fair. You can't focus on your rhythm and fucking is and all at the same time. Do you know how many times I've just wanted to go when she's on top? Baby, is it good for you? Money with my eagles, prate! Jij prate with my fucking eagles, day. I don't know why I'm the one that's like this, but whatever, you don't know my life. My name is Kolpa Sadna, thank you very much. You know, I got to thinking. The beauty of this job is I get to travel. And I've traveled quite a few times, you know? And when you travel as an African, people will ask you stupid questions. I got asked, you're from Johannesburg, right? I'm like, yeah. Like, how's the crime? I hate the question. I hate how's the crime. Because I don't know how to answer how's the crime. The crime is not my uncle. Why am I supposed to say? Partly cloudy? And I hate the fact that there is crime in Johannesburg, right? Because in Norway, I don't know if you know this, it's one of the most successful countries. So they don't have much crime. There was an, actually an experiment that was done in Norway where they put an iPhone 5, it's called the iPhone 5 test. Back then, the iPhone 5 was still cool, still a big phone. And they left it on a bench for a whole day, and no one took it. They did the same kind of experiment in Japan, and the phone lasted there for 13 hours. I dare them to try the experiment in Johannesburg. They'll get there to try, like, okay, it's time for the experiment. Where's the phone that we're supposed to put on the bench? That's what's supposed to happen. But I hate seeing crime on TV because it feels like our crime leaks and people from around the world seeing what's happening in our country. It's not your business. People from Norway, it's our business what happens to our crime. Like, I once saw this heist in Randburg, right? And this one guy got shot by the police and got arrested. And I was so angry at this one guy because he was wearing shorts and flip-flops. Short band and flip-flops. You cannot do a heist in short pants and flip-flops. That's crazy. That's the most casual heisting I've ever seen in my life. That guy left the house, he didn't know it was a heist. He went there to buy bread and he found people heisting and says, yeah, I could heist. I, I could, no, no. How can you be so casual about a heist? Deserves to go to jail. Flip-flop heist. You people still here? Show's over, bye. Bye. <laughs>